Welcome, I'm Tracy Pa with another episode of Scope. It was around 6.40 p.m. on 7th of October 2023, the town of Medang was suddenly shocked by seizures of earthquakes, two of those measured a magnitude of 6.7 on the Richter scale. The epicenter in the Rikos district. The unforeseenable episode prompted the Minister for Defence and Provincial Authorities to convene an emergency stakeholders meeting to conduct assessment and provide relief where needed. Reporter Alice Peter reports on the post-quake assessment and the response. The aftermath of the earthquake in Medang was classified as low. In the early evening of Saturday, October 7th, an unexpected earthquake shook Medang province. It was followed by multiple earthquakes that was equally felt in other parts of the Momasa region and the Highlands regions. It was enough to cause damage to residential properties and that of businesses too. News agencies were out and about on that fateful day to capture the aftermath. Buildings in the main town center were cracked and goods strewn about, some completely destroyed. The next two days was spent cleaning up. By Monday midday, business houses slowly opened shops. Late that evening, the Minister for Defence flew into Medang and met with members of Parliament from the province, including Governor Ramsey Pariwa and Member for Rikost Kesi Sawang. They had dialogue with stakeholders including the Provincial Disaster Centre, Water PNG and PNG Power on the damages caused to vital services and what was being done to get these services in operation again. Discussions included government assessment and intervention. One day, Mr. you will cooperate and give a good report, and then Bosman will be lawyer and will carry the report to Mosby. And then, Governor, we will go to the classroom and plus will build it. But the government, I will not lose me. Since the earthquake, water, power, and communication services have been restored. Provincial Education Director John Ura said they successfully commenced and ended the Grade 10 examinations amidst the calamity. This included Rykost Secondary School. It was reported that the earthquake epicenter was at Rykost. However, the member for Rykost was more concerned for her people in the Finisterre Ranges who most often are severely impacted by earthquakes from past experience. In Midang Town, the most affected residents were those living in semi-permanent houses, including residents at Wago, Gabsto, Banana Block, Bilia and LBC. Divine Word University, the Lutheran School of Nursing and Medang Teachers College reported damages to the infrastructure including houses and fencing. So this so 
A disaster coordinating team was put together following the emergency meeting with the parliamentary leaders. It comprised of lead agency, the Provincial Disaster Centre, with support from the National Disaster Centre, PNG Defence Force, Geohazard Division, UNDP, Medang Provincial Health Authority, Police, the Provincial Education Division, Correctional Services, Governor's Office and NGOs like Red Cross and the International Organization for Migration. A plan was set in motion to strategically visit affected areas, assess and collect data. They would visit Medang Town, Karkar Island and Waikos District. The assessment team met with the Sumkar District Administration who took them to the impacted areas and collected data from ward councillors. During each visit, the team noted minor damages including affected water wells due to landslides, infrastructure damages were evident in schools and residential homes, and sections of the roads into these areas had severe cracks. In Rikos, the assessment team found that damages were not drastic as imagined. Most of the villages reported no major damages to properties, no loss of lives. During the visit, medical supplies for Saido were delivered, among them 200 bales each of mosquito nets and blankets from IOM. In the event, awareness was carried out by IOM to ensure locals are resilient during such occurrences and natural disasters. I'm also calling after she. Time big plug good is a come up. Is I got all leak leak by leak leak after so care all by stop. All by come up low. Some of the time it leak go 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 or now on by indi. On by go finish. So now get you plan. Walk no feeling stop there. I'm all still back. I'm last week that's all. This is like good. So I'm by go yet. Go on good next week or now blah week. I'm sorry taking longer time. Depend on strong look good. Uh, me black like similar last week yeah, Saturday and all six yeah, also to make me to six point seven uh, six point nine. Uh, and I uh, suppose I mean I six point seven or six point nine and nine so I got big label. Suppose make me to seven ego on top and now by black can plant the happy and grand by book big black. All this like I don't lose your babu. Long name this like happy, Mr. Adenit low one have good come up. So all ground two and by book this like happy was and we've been big blood through, and by God, all brook brook in this part. You know, look at all brook. This is the only blood talk about Arrelo Mountain, and we've been shaking here. Now, now, I'm Arrelo Mountain, and by Suruk Lig Lig. Now, I'm by, suppose, you got all Lig Lig Lig, and by Imita Suruk, put him wash, no good, and by Suruk Suruk Moet. The magnitude of damage caused by the earthquake has been classified as low and does not warrant a leader or international intervention. This outcome was reached following days of assessment and evaluation of quake-stricken communities of Karkar Island and Rai Coast. The disaster coordination team's way forward is to ensure the affected communities return to normal. To install temporary seismic monitors around the perimeter of the epicenter, the UNDP will assist with the seismic monitors and installed by Geohazard. The four Raspberry seismic monitors will be placed at Walium, Basamu, Saido and Medang. The district will handle any disaster reports and assessments from here on. All residents affected by the earthquakes to coordinate with their ward council members to collect names and photographs of damages done. This will be used as data and reference for government intervention or compensation. Currently, the Provincial Disaster Center is under-resourced and is unable to provide solid updates on how government will be handling the situation. However, Director Adolf Mungali said it is vital to have data at hand to conveniently respond to such situations. In the meantime, authorities are calling and urging everyone that has been impacted by the earthquakes to take ownership. 
When we come back, the PNG National Ambulance Operation celebrates a year of saving lives and restoring hope. When we come back, the PNG National Ambulance Operations celebrates a year of saving lives and restoring hope. Carol Kidu brings the story of the NHOC and its significance in responding to life-saving situations across the clock and around the country. The National Ambulance Operations Center, often referred to as the NAOC, is a critical component of our country's emergency medical services. It serves as a central hub for managing and coordinating ambulance service and responses to medical emergencies on a national level. The key functions of the NAOC include receiving emergency calls from individuals in need of medical assistance accessible through the 111 emergency hotline across all networks. Within the NAOC, three integral components work tirelessly to ensure timely and effective responses to medical emergencies, the phone operator, emergency medical call taker, and dispatcher. The phone operator answers the calls and sends through to our emergency medical call taker, who asks a set of questions, and our system, the computer-aided dispatch, assess the severity of each emergency, and it prompts our dispatcher to dispatch the appropriate ambulance or medical response to the location. The NAOC serves as a coordination area as well. It coordinates the movement and deployment of ambulances and medical personnel to ensure efficient and timely responses to emergency. The center also manages and tracks the availability of ambulances, medical services, and personnel to ensure adequate coverage and response capabilities. The NAOC functions as a coordination hub, orchestrating the movement and deployment of ambulances and medical personnel. This orchestration ensures efficient and timely responses to emergencies and the NAOC also plays a pivotal role as a central communication hub for Papua New Guinea, fostering collaboration between emergency services, hospitals and other agencies. Beyond coordinating responses, the NAOC is a vital data collection and analysis center. It accumulates data related to emergency incidents and ambulance operations, which is later used to enhance performance and allocate resources more effectively. Duty Operations Commanding Officer Alexander Demain sheds light on the significant strides made in expanding ambulance coverage. With stations across Papua New Guinea, they are touching the lives of over 20,000 people. All services are provided free of charge, ensuring that help is accessible to all. As we were said by the government, um, with, with the support of our government, um, Saint John, um, with the support of our government and our stakeholders, we are able to open up stations up in the regional centres and also along um, Gulf and. and, and, and uh, with the support of our government and our stakeholders, St. John Ambulance has opened up stations uh, across Papua New Guinea. So currently we have a station at... Um, so currently we have a station up in Eastern Bita Province, in Morobe Province, in um, now with the recent um, initiation, initiative by the government, we, we are opening up at Ungai Bena in Goroka and currently working to uh, open up a station in um, Chimbu as well. And along the central province and the Gulf province as well, we have a um, station that's uh, recently been opened in Kuriva and in also uh, in the central province along Magi Highway to uh, Berena. Give me the Kupihana. Notably, the NAOC serves as a public education and awareness center. It equips communities with the knowledge and emergency services they need to ensure that their calls to Triple One are treated with the highest priority and importance. The PNG National Ambulance Operations Center has proven its worth, responding to approximately 21,500 emergencies 
in the previous year. This remarkable feat emphasizes the indispensable role it plays in the nation's healthcare system. The NAOC operates with a dedicated team of professionals who work tirelessly to ensure that the best pre-hospital care for victims. Their services extend to regional centers, NCD, and even aeromedical support. So, in our team, basically, we have trained ambulance officers, we have paramedics, we have um, health extension officers, we have medical officers, and also um, registered nurses as well. So, it is a um, full team to, to, to be accessed. So, we try to provide the best pre hospital care to our team. So, we are prepared to have. Um, uh, we are prepared basically for any emergency. It can be out in the regional centers, it can be in NCD. We also provide aeromedical as well. Uh, we have a team that is uh, specific, uh, specifically trained for, to provide aeromedical. If there's um, a, a corner that calls him from, uh, let's say, from all of the uh, from areas that and land ambulance cannot reach, we also provide those support as well. And we have a special operations uh, team, it's called ASOT. Um, this team is uh, specifically trained to be sent out if there's a need for um, special operations. We work closely with the Royal um, Police Constabulary and also the Defense, uh, Kenji Defense Force and um, other service providers like the fire department as well. So we have, um, we're working towards the memorandum of understanding or MOA or MOU just to have this team um, to provide that support to those uh, that are out in the special operations. The NAOC is an unsung hero in the annals of pre-hospital health care, orchestrating a symphony of life-saving efforts. In 2022 alone, the PNG National Ambulance Operations Center responded to approximately 21,500 emergencies. Duty Operations Commanding Officer Alexander Demain gives a live-action explanation of how a response is coordinated. Um, currently, there's a situation that's happening right now at Lost Road, a uh, case that has been reported at a fire and explosion along um, Avos Avenue. Um, two of ambulances have been sent up. So our dispatcher coordinator now is coordinating the whole response. It's just having a brief oversight or just an oversight of what is happening. So with our CAT system, we have a real-time uh, location of our geolocation of the case or the fire explosion and also the unit therapy dispatch. So once they're tra traveling along to the case location, it is being uh, monitored by us. So what we'll be waiting for is the initial CTRAP by uh, the team that is being sent down. So whatever, um, whichever team that arrives first gives the initial CTRAP of um, the number of casualties, there's a need for additional support. So from there, it comes to the dispatcher. Dispatcher um, relays the information to the DT operations commander. From there, we um, officiate additional support that, that might be needed. So on our radio systems here, we have Pongen that is online currently. So we have set up at the triage area. So when they report if they um, to alert Comgen if there's um, a need to um, a need to prepare or to expect a number of casualties, we'll alert them so they should be ready to prepare for this. So it's, it's like an all basically uh, a well coordinated uh, response from our end. Uh, what we try to do is just to ensure that there's seamless communication. That's from our ambulance team to the National Operations Center and to the health facility as well. And before, when our phone operators receive the call, uh, and they get transferred over to our call takers. So we have Phil Proust, who is an educator with the New South Wales Ambulance Service. He's been working in Papua New Guinea for well over a decade now. And um, his level of expertise has been very, very uh, valuable to us um, in the National Operations Center and his services are quite, is, is really appreciated. Uh, he's been working with, closely with our emergency medical call takers. 
Phil Proust, Assistant Commissioner Paramedic Advisor, highlights the pivotal role of emergency call takers. They are the first responders providing essential information to dispatch ambulances swiftly. Their calm demeanor and methodical approach in dealing with distress callers are a lifeline in critical situations. So, my role is just to mentor our emergency call takers. So, I liken that when someone dials 111, it's like someone knocking on St John Ambulance's door saying, I need help. And uh, the emergency call takers are the ones that actually open the door and they're the first people that they speak to in St John. So it's a very, very important role that our call medical type call takers do because, in fact, um, if they don't get all the information of where the patient is, then we can't send an ambulance. So when, when someone calls 111, you'll probably hear the call taker say, hello, St John Ambulance, what's the location of the emergency? And that's the very first thing they want to know because if something happens and the caller's phone goes flat, we may not know what we're going to, but we know that at that location, someone needs an ambulance. So it's very important. So our call takers are probably one of the most important people in this control centre, because without them getting all the right information, we can't send an ambulance. They have a very difficult job because when people ring up, they're quite distressed. Uh, some of, they may have seen something very terrible, and here they are, they're trying to call for help. And our call takers are, are very calm, they're very methodical and they try and keep the, the caller at ease because once they get the caller at ease, they're able to get a lot more information. So um, it's a very, very difficult job and um, I've been very, very proud in the last three weeks um, that the call takers with the three weeks of mentoring we had have done exceptionally well and I'm more than comfortable that if I rang called 111, um, I'd be getting the right response first time. While callers are in conversation with call takers, ambulances are already en route to the scene. This rapid response time is made possible by a well-coordinated system that reduces delays in sending aid. The NAOC answers every triple one call from all over Papua New Guinea, extending its reach to remote regions. They respond to a varying number of calls daily, depending on factors like weather and events. Certain occasions such as New Year's Eve and Independence Day see a surge in calls. These celebrations often result in alcohol and drug-related incidents, emphasizing the importance of the NAOC's work. In Papua New Guinea, the PNG National Ambulance Operations Center is more than just a helpline. It is a lifeline that saves lives, restores hope, and provides essential healthcare services. As we explore the vital role played by the NAOC in the nation's emergency medical response system, we witness firsthand the dedication of the remarkable professionals who serve the people of Papua New Guinea with unwavering commitment. The NAOC is the embodiment of hope and it stands as a testament to the power of collaboration and dedication in the face of emergencies. Until next Sunday, I'm Trace Sipa. Good night.